Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, just keep prayed up. It helps. Sometimes you can't see your prayers being answered right away. But in the end, God's will will be done. Just remember that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me rest in the night watches, Lord Jesus. As you continue to watch over me, my wife, our kids, our loved ones, those who we come in contact with throughout the day, Lord Jesus. As you to send your Holy Spirit down into my heart, into my soul, as you may you seem fit to bring forth whatever word it is that you want me to bring forth in accordance to your word and our understanding and our truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I continue on, I just want to, something just dropped in my head when I was praying. Everybody remember when Jesus was in Yosemite and he prayed and prayed to his father. You understand that this cup would be taken away from him, going to the cross. You understand? And he prayed and he prayed, prayed for hours, I'm sure. You understand? Long enough for his disciples to keep falling asleep and over and over again. And then towards the end, he just, he said something. He was like, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. You see, a lot of times we'll be praying for something. You understand? And it doesn't, something we want to happen that God doesn't want to happen. But we got to be like Jesus towards that. We got to be like, hey, Lord, even if this is what I feel I want, let your will be done. You understand? Let your will be done. Just as a side note right there. It's not always that your prayers are not being answered. It's, it's that they got to be answered according to God's will and God's purpose for your life. You see, that's why the Lord's prayer is so important. It's not about us. It's about God's will. Even Jesus, the son of God, prayed because he knew what was about to happen in his life, but he surrendered. Do you understand? He prayed and he surrendered. Sometimes you just got to pray and surrender. Anyway, I hope that message says somebody. Um, yesterday I started reading on in Revelations. I'm going to go back to the first part of Revelation chapter 2. And I'm going to keep reading on. But if you uh, ain't catch the video from yesterday, watch it. It says a lot of good things. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Until the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou hast, canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick of his place, except thou repent. Now you got to understand what he's saying. He said, first love, right? He said, first love. Then he told him what his first love was. Go back to doing how you were when you first started. You understand? I have this somewhat against you. You're still going. But go back to the first words. And then he said, you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. If you want to understand what the Nicolaitans is, watch the video from yesterday. And to the angel of the church that smeared the right, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now look at what he just said. He said, they say they are Jews, but they are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You see, Jesus gives us warnings about certain things. You just got to pay attention. For none of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be retried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And look what he says. He said, be thou faithful unto death. I mean, if they're going to kill you, be faithful to the end. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcome shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pagamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name. And has not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan 
dwelleth. Now, that's why you got to know the New Testament, the Old Testament, the things of such like that. You'll see why. But I have a few things against it, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. This is twice. He talked about the Nicolaitans and, and how they do things that he hate. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear. The Spirit saith unto the churches, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. I'm going to stop right there. Just a little quick one today. You understand? I know Revelation is kind of hard to chew sometimes. It's kind of hard to bite off. But the thing is, you got to read it. You see, you got to know the Old Testament too. Did you hear what he said? He talked about Balaam and Balak. If you don't know the story of Balaam and Balak, you won't even know what he's talking about. You understand? So you understand what I'm saying? You can't just read the New Testament and be like, okay, I got to figure it out. All right. You got to know what happened between Balaam and Balak. You got to know what was going on. Well, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what happened with Balaam and Balak. At that time, the children of Israel was being persecuted by who? Balak. And Balak saw that the children of Israel were, were prospering and doing good. And he wanted to pay Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And he just couldn't do it. He's like, I can't do that. I can't curse who God has blessed. You understand? I can't do that. You understand? I can't do that. But he, he kept urging Balaam, hey, do this. I'll give you anything. You know, i pay you if you just curse the children of Israel. You understand? So... He finally baited him up a little bit. And Bay Balaam, he's headed that way. He headed to Balak. And Jesus told him, don't go to him. I mean, God told him, don't go to Balak. Don't go to him. You understand? So here it is, Balaam on the road. You understand? Trying to go meet up with Balak. Because he didn't promise him this money. Promise him some, some riches to deceive or to curse the children of Israel, right? And along the way, he riding on a donkey. And the donkey wouldn't go nowhere. Every time he tried to go further, the donkey wouldn't stop. But the, he didn't know that there was an angel in front of him with a sword. And the angel kept stopping him from moving forward. Stopping the donkey, that is. The donkey saw it. He was like, what in the world? All right. So he started beating the donkey. He started walking again. The angel Locked his path again. The, 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 the donkey wouldn't go. Blum beating the donkey, donkey again. Right? Then eventually, God gave the, the donkey uh, words to speak. Basically, why are you beating me? You understand? Why are you doing this? You understand? And then, all of a sudden, his eyes were open. And he saw the angel too. And the angel was like, if you would have kept going, I would have smoked you. You understand? Basically, but he used the donkey to stop him from moving forward and he talked through it. You understand? But you got to really know the whole story. Even in the New Testament, they talks about Balaam and Balak, a, a dumb, a dumb ass speaking with man's voice rebuked him. You'll find it. You understand? But you got to understand something. The word of God can't be bought. It can't be bought for a price. You can't change what God says through a price tag. You understand? You can't do that. You understand? Balaam couldn't do it. But you know, if you read the whole story, you'll see exactly what he's talking about. What You got to read it in its entirety to truly understand what was going on at that time. I just gave you a little snippet of somewhat what was going on. And then he said, he said in the Revelation, he was like, these people claim they are Jews but are the synagogue of Satan. And basically telling this this follower that I know you dwell among them. You understand? I know you dwell among them. You stand true to the faith. But they're going to cast you in prison. And if you stand fast to the end, you understand? We'll give you a crown of life. You understand? And then in the first on, he talk about Satan again. So you, you around them that sit at Satan's seat. Now, he's talking about to the churches now. You got to remember he's talking about the churches. 
he's talking to the churches. So some of the churches must be practicing some devilish, satanic things. You understand? Because he said you dwell among them. You in this church. <laughs> Come on now. Open your eyes, people. You got to be careful out here. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Some churches are good. Some churches are not. But God understands. He understands your faith. Even if you dwell in a church like that, he understands. He's telling you he understands. But you stay true to me. No matter if they ain't, you stay true. And you also hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You understand? Then he went back to the first one talking about, but you are rich. You understand? But you are rich. Wow. He tells you things that can cast stumbling blocks upon the children of Israel. I mean, of, of his people. You understand? Of God's people. Then he says something about getting a white stone. Wow, that's deep. You understand? With your new name on it. Hmm. Wow. It's deep. But you know, you got to get more deep in detail with a lot of things. But you have to research some things. You know, like I, yesterday, I gave you a little snippet of what a Nicolaitan is. All right? It'll help you out. You understand? Reading the bird word and just reading it and just not seeing what it really means kind of will confuse you because you'll be like, what is that? Because the word Nicolaitan is not written in the Bible no other time but these twice, two times in Revelations. You understand? Just two times. You understand? And he also telling you it's a synagogue of Satan. It's going to be a synagogue of Satan floating around. And some of y'all are going to be in it. Some of us are going to be in the synagogue of Satan. But you staying true to me. Not like that synagogue is. And they're going to persecute you for it. He's telling you. He's telling you what you're going to go through. He's telling you how the last times and days are going to be. You understand? And the thing is, he said, he said a name. Artemis, a faithful martyr. Now, well, when I was reading it, I was like, I got to research that. Why? Because Jesus said it. I got to see what this is all about. You understand? I don't understand everything, but I got to see what this is all about. You know, it kind of tells you some things may have already came to pass. You understand? In regards to biblical prophecy. You know. But I'm not even getting to the, it's just the beginning of Revelation. The beginning, he starts off talking to the churches. Starts off talking to his people. Telling John to write this down. Tell him. Tell them what changes I need, I want made in them. Or what's going to happen to them. You understand? You know. But one of my favorite ones is the first one. Go back to your first love. You know, your first love. Now, I can relate to that. Because so many times I fell from how I used to be. You understand? In regards to scripture and studying and things like that. Go back to doing your first works. And the thing is, a lot of us are going to fall in that category. We love God. You understand? We love Him. But we didn't just tone it down a little bit. You understand? I know I talked about this one yesterday, but the other two takes a little more in-depth to talk about. But like I said, I gave you a little backlog on it. You understand? And He's telling you specific. God is not talking in parables. Jesus is not talking in parables right now. He's talking straightforward. He's telling you straightforward what it is. He's telling you straightforward. It's a synagogue of Satan out there. He's telling you straightforward that you dwell among those people who worship Satan's seat. He's telling straightforward. You understand? And then when I read on further on, you're going to see some more straightforwardness in regards to what Jesus says to the churches. But let me focus back on the first one again. The church in Ephesus. You understand? If you read Ephesians, that's what he means. The Ephesus church. The church in Ephesus. Ephesians. You understand? Ephesians. Read Ephesians and see what happened. See what was going on. See what Paul talked about in Ephesians. And Ephesians is a good book. It's, it's really straightforward. 
I think it's the book that talks about marriage and, and things of such. Also, you understand how it's supposed to be. You know, even in further on, he was talking about how this church, like, basically encourages fornication and things of such like that. Hmm. Wow, that's crazy. But you got to understand what, when it comes to a biblical term, what fornication means. You got two meanings of fornication in the biblical sense. When God says whoredoms and they're going to whoring, you can commit fornication against God. By what? Cheating on them or worshiping other gods. It's like a whoredom. It's like fornication. Then you got fornication, just sex outside of marriage. You understand? Spiritual. Think of the spiritual sense too. When you read that Bible, read it, and I'll understand the truth. He's going to tell you what you need to know every time. There's no way around it. You understand? I know it's hard. You know why? Because most people don't even read Revelations anymore. Most churches don't even talk on reading Revelations at all. You understand? It's rare that you see somebody get up there and talk about Revelation. You know, you rarely see that anymore. Like I talked about just based on this when I was yesterday, when I was young, how my mom used to read Revelations to us. You understand? All I knew was it was scary. You understand? I knew it was scary. I knew about the Antichrist coming. I knew the end was coming. My mom told me the end would come and Christ would come back. I knew that from a little child. And the majority of us do know about revelations. You understand? But it's like it's been far away from us so long that we neglect about it. You know, if, if you know about the end times coming, and you know it can come when you least expect. You understand? Come when you least expect. If you read your, the Bible, when you read when Jesus is talking in Matthew, he said, if you start sluggering and think the father delays his coming, he may come at a time when you least expect it. Let me, let me break it down. Death can come anytime, right? And after death, judgment. It can come at any time. Your worst can cease anytime on this earth. That's why God is telling you the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because it, be, it can be at hand for me. It can be at hand for anybody else. You see, if you know that the world is going to end, if you believe that Christ is coming back. Your thing is to get ready and be ready when he do return. You understand? You know, uh, if we just focus on how to get materially rich, how to get uh, wealthy in this world, successful in this world, you're going to start forgetting about, hey, this world will cease. And even after this, there's an afterlife. You understand? So many things in the Bible has already come into play. Jesus gives in Matthew and in Luke. I mean, Matthew and Mark, he gives a little taste of revelations. He tells his disciples certain things that's going to happen. You understand? When the end days come. Jesus touched based on this. And then you go back to the book of the prophets, they touched based on it too. Daniel even more so. You understand? They talk about it. They talk about things that's going to happen in regards to this world when it gets close to his time you know I'm not very skilled in interpreting prophecy or reading prophecy you understand but I'm going to get there eventually but there are people out there that interpret pretty good you can find them you know what I'm saying they're on YouTube you understand they're on YouTube and you have noticed something you rarely hear these evangelical preachers talking about these big mega churches talk about the end times they talk about the now you know that's cool talk about that now it's it's good to hear god is good it's it's good to hear god is grace it's good to hear god is mercy you know what i'm saying it's good to hear god is forgiving it's good to hear that god gave his only begotten son and whoever should call on him should not perish it's good to hear those things but you got to understand what he's talking about perish from what should not perish from what what are you talking about would not perish all right tell what he means when he's talking about you will not perish, you will not burn in hell. You understand? Perish from what? So you can live. Where? Where the place he got prepared for us. Where? In my father's house. Where? Where there are many mansions. Where? Why? Why? Because if I wouldn't have told you, if I tell you this, it is. It is what it is. That's why. Believe it. Believe what he tells you. You understand? 
And he also says it's a place prepared for the angels. You understand? And the devil that left that proper domain. He tells you it's a place for them too. And he tells you it's a place for sinners. Or people who don't repent. Who don't call on God. Now I understand the truth. Who don't call on Jesus. Who don't accept him in their life. You understand? Tell them. Tell them that part too. Tell them the part where it says you must be baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. Tell them that part. Tell them that part when he says, keep my commandments. You understand? Do the works that I do. Tell them that part too. You understand? If you love me, keep my commandments. Tell them all of it. Everybody know God is love. Everybody know God is mercy. Everybody know God is forgiving. You understand? Forgiving from what? Why, is, why does Jesus come to save us from what? What does Jesus come to save us from? You got to understand something. Jesus came to save us from something. Did he come to save us so we can have pleasures and live in riots living in this earth and for us to be forgiven and do what we want to do and use Christ as a get out of jail free card? Did this, is that why he died for our sins? Is that why? So you can continue to do the same thing with no changes? One thing you're going to read about in Revelations, he said, repent. Make a change. I did a video last week in regards to change. Talked about Nehemiah. When the, the nation turned back to God, changes were made in the nation. So when you turn to God, changes must be made in your house, in your temple, in your body. Changes must be made. Because you can't get into heaven a certain way. What ways are those? No liar will inherit the kingdom of heaven. No thief, no whoremonger, no adulterer, no fornicator, no sexually immoral person, no drunkards. It's a lot of things, a lot of types of people that would not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But he can forgive you and he can change those things. You understand? No witch, no sorcerer, none of those things. No idolater, idolater. Won't make it. You understand? You see, Tell the whole story to folks. Tell the whole story. You know, I did research on the Nicolaitans yesterday. And I did this before. This ain't the first time I did this. This is my second video that I talked about in regards to the Nicolaitans. You can look it up for yourself, too. And if you look it up, it'll really tell you some things. It's like that sugar-coated preaching. Like, when I researched it last year, it was like, basically, they believe like you can do whatever you want here. Because you're going to get a new body. You understand? You can do what you want here. Hmm? That sounds like the synagogue of Satan type uh, teaching. Do as thou wilt. Hmm? Do as thou wilt. That's not scripture. Do as thou wilt. The synagogue of Satan's teachings are thrown around here. But they didn't spread it out and mix it into different doctrines and this and that. You don't understand, like, you know, a lot of the Muslims, a lot of these extremist groups, they get promises for committing suicide. What are their promise for committing suicide for their God? Supposedly. They get virgins in heaven. They get the same type of riches down here, up there. Basically, heaven is not heaven. Heaven is just a, a glorified earth where you can have as many versions as you can and sleep with men and women as you can in heaven. You understand? And have more gold and silver in heaven. So like I said, what's heaven for the virgins? I ask people that question. So if they're dying and going to heaven, you know what that sounds like? Just listen. What it sounds like? It sounds like the devil offering you the same pleasures here there and you're killing yourself to get pleasures that the devil offers here in heaven well my bible says and and uh the resurrection in heaven they neither give into marriage or are given to marriage no more marriage so that means no more fornication that means no more sexual intercourse but according to what they manipulate these people to believe you know, you may not be nothing here. But in heaven, 
You're going to have 40 virgins. And silver and gold, you're going to be rich in heaven. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good enough for you to want to kill yourself. For a cause that they misled you in. And people are doing it. You understand? Suicide. Suicide. Wow. That's crazy. And it's, these leaders are leading people to do these things. And the thing is, there are extreme Christian groups out, out there too. Think about it. Back in the day, the Ku Klux Klan were Christian, supposedly. Well, I guess they didn't have people reading their Bibles. <laughs> they weren't reading their Bibles. You understand? You can't just make a group and throw a Christian stamp on there and don't go by what he say in there. You understand? Most extreme groups live by the Bible. neo Nazis live by the Bible. You know, it's a it's a group that's rising up. I'm not saying majority, but some. A sect that's rising up into the black Hebrew Israelites. You remember that bombing that was that took place and I mean that shooting that took place up north? That was them. An extreme group. You know, extreme group. I guess they're doing it for God. I guess they're going and shooting up people for God. Well, the Bible says you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Well, the sword now, another word for the sword is the, a gun. And when they went in there and they shot that place up, they died by the sword. They got killed too by the same bullets. Maybe a different bullet, but they got killed by the same sword they used. You understand? You got to pay attention to these extreme groups that's going on out there. Pro this, pro that. Black power, white power, orange power, yellow power, Chinese power. You got to be careful with these groups. You understand? got to be careful with these secret sex and stuff like that. You know, people hate it when you talk about the Freemasons. Oh, they just a group, you know. Well, I've done my research on them too. I remember when I was young and my brother, let me stop for a second, I'm going to continue.